So today we are going to be talking about your brain on ADHD, a holistic approach to treating ADHD with herbs, diet, and lifestyle changes. So who am I? You might be asking this. You might be just new coming into the group and don't know. So I am Shannon. I am the owner of the Nomad Apothecary. It is a master holistic herbalist business that I own and run from my um, RV as we travel around the country. It's the name Nomad in the uh, business name. Uh, so what are my qualifications? I have been an RN for the last 15 years and the last four of those years have been a CGRN which is a certified gastroenterology registered nurse which is a fancy term for saying that I know a hell of a lot about the digestive system and how it works, and that is what I do as a nurse currently, is GI-related stuff. Um, I got my certified herbalist degree back in 2013 and um, really started working with that, and I had another business that I had started called Faded Leaves, which was also a herbalist business. Unfortunately, life happened and that business went under due to circumstances out of my control, but still always really liked it and wanted to get back into it. So decided to go back to school. So in 2019, I went back for Master Herbalist in my advanced Master Herbalist degrees and I completed the Master Herbalist at the end of 2020 and the advanced Master Herbalist a few months later in 2021. So I now have those degrees under my belt as well. Um, I also have ADHD. My diagnosis was back in January of 2019 at 35 years old. I had just gotten married to my husband the month before, and when I got my diagnosis, I looked at him and basically was like, well, we're already married, so you can't back out now. <laughs> so it was a relief in some ways to get that, and also kind of hard to get that at 35 and realize that, you know, so much in my life could have been different and um, I developed a lot of healthy and also unhealthy coping mechanisms. And the purpose of this teaching is to help other women who have gone through the same with a late diagnosis find some other ways to treat it and maybe work out some of those unhealthy coping mechanisms that we have developed, um, not knowing that we had ADHD this whole time. Um, quick little bonus fact, all four of my children have ADHD as well. So, you know, it's uh, quite an interesting life over here um, with that going on. Uh, so what does this mean when I say I'm a master herbalist? It means I have over 600 hours of training on herbs, herbal preparations, safety, and how to use them. Plus, I also have almost 10 years, maybe quite at 10 years now, um, of using them for personal and professional reasons. I um, have started using them more for myself and then also for my prior business about 10 years ago when my um, endometriosis got worse and nothing was helping that the doctors were offering and pretty soon they ran out of you know solutions and I was you know still miserable so I turned back to herbs and started really using them for that and uh, been kind of hooked ever since. So that is just a brief who am I and what I bring to the table for this discussion and for my business the Nomad Apothecary. So what will we be learning today? We will be learning uh, about the symptoms of ADHD in women. This uh, pod podcast, this <laughs> seminar is more geared toward women as I obviously am one who was diagnosed later. So that'll be mostly that. If you're looking for stuff for children, just remember to ask in the comments and I can definitely give some recommendations on what you can use for them as well. Uh, we'll also be learning about ADHD in your brain, how it works and how it, uh, how to help it focus better, um, what hyperactivity of the mind is and how to help calm it, um, sleep, how sleep patterns are disordered in ADHD and how to help your body get the rest that it needs, um, dosing of herbs, how to take them appropriately, and other holistic ways to help ADHD symptoms. So what are the symptoms of ADHD in women? This is going to be quite a long list, so buckle up. Low self-esteem, hypersensitivity to criticism, a poor sense of time. This is due to what is considered time blindness, um, where we don't have the ability to regulate and keep track of time like other individuals do. Um, emotionally charged and easily upset. These are made worse during your period. 
And anybody who um, has ADHD as a woman knows that this is especially true. Um, you can also have anxiety and depression. We start all the things and we never finish them. Taking on too much of responsibility. This is our time blindness and also our inability to accurately estimate time needed and actually finishing tasks. Uh, we all know that executive dysfunction gets in our way sometimes, and so we may say, oh yeah, we can do one, two, three, four, five things, and then we find out that we really can't. And so that's because we overestimate our ability to get things done with the executive dysfunction. Other symptoms include difficulty remembering names. This gets worse before, during, and after your cycle, and also during menopause. Um, I have a ridiculously hard time with names and it's getting worse as I get older and then it's also getting worse now that everybody's wearing masks. Everybody looks the same and I cannot remember who's who and it is getting a little crazy. Um, so I do rely on little like cues to get me through and that might also be something that you have developed as well. Um, other symptoms, speaking without thinking, I do this a lot myself. Appear self-absorbed, um, neurodiverse individuals tend to, in a way to help relate to people and say, hey, I understand what you're going through, tend to be like, oh, I understand because I also did X or I have gone through Y. And so it appears that we're really thinking about ourselves when really we're just trying to find a way to relate to that person and let them know we understand in a way that's the only way we know how. Um, poor math and writing skills. The math is definitely true for me. Um, never listening to others is a common complaint from other people because we, some of us, not all of us, but many of us tend to be talkers and uh, seem like we're talking over people sometimes. Most of that is because if we stop talking in the middle of a sentence, we know we will forget what we were trying to say. And if it's important, we want to get it out before we forget. Um, engaging in unhealthy behaviors, and that's those unhealthy coping mechanisms we discussed earlier. Difficulty with word retrieval, and surprise, this gets worse with your cycle and when menopause hits as well. And difficulty with boring, repetitive tasks. That is like the bane of ADHD existence is having to do the same thing over and over again, and it gets dull very quickly. So other symptoms, difficulty making decisions, difficulty sitting still, and trouble falling asleep and waking up, which is also increased during your period and your menopause. <laughs> so these are a lot of symptoms. How many of these can you relate to? I've relate to pretty much all of them. There's a few that don't hit me, you know, completely, but for the most part, it's uh, a lot um, that we can relate to. So what can we do to help Stay focused and stay on task. Many of us have trouble doing both of those things. Why is that? That is because brain chemistry is the number one reason. ADHD brains are naturally low in dopamine. They are naturally low in norepinephrine. These are hormones and neurotransmitters that are responsible for regulating brain arousal and attention levels. And without higher levels of those, it makes it very difficult to maintain focus and stay on task. Um, quick little tip while we're here, increasing your intake of nuts and seeds can help boost your norepinephrine levels naturally. So what exactly is dopamine and norepinephrine? Norepinephrine is a hormone, also a neurotransmitter. It helps regulate the sympathetic nervous system. This nervous system is the one that is responsible for the fight or flight reaction. Low levels of norepinephrine can lead you to anxiety, depression, hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugars, migraines, and trouble sleeping. It's also believed that low levels may contribute to the development of ADHD. So those of us who have naturally low levels that may have contributed to the development of our ADHD and led us to where we are today. So, dopamine is a neurotransmitter as well. It is responsible for increasing feelings of alertness, wakefulness, assertiveness, and aggressiveness. If you have low levels of dopamine, this can lead to drowsiness, inability to focus, and a hard time waking up in the morning. Um, this can also be, if you've ever, especially now that most of us are doing 
um, online schooling or schooling from home. And we notice that our ADHD kids or even ourselves watching the classes with them. And it is something that is boring us to death and we don't get it or understand it or we don't like it. And you start feeling like you're going to fall asleep in the middle of the class. And some people do. That is because your dopamine levels are decreasing and you are not able to stay awake. If it's something you're interested in or you really like, it'll increase your dopamine levels and you'll have the opposite reaction. So how can we work on both of these? So holistic ways to boost focus and help boost norepinephrine and dopamine. Diet changes. And I don't mean those crazy diets you've probably seen that are fad diets to help with ADHD where you cut basically everything fun out of your diet, nothing red, and no candy, no sugar, no sweets, no fruit. It's ridiculous. Um, diet changes that are good for ADHD that don't require you to cut all the fun out of your life are seeds, nuts, black tea, and green tea. So those are things you can easily add in without having to change everything and cut a bunch of fun stuff out of your diet. Um, herbs that can help are ginseng, nettles, red clover, fenugreek, dandelion, all parts of dandelion. This is the roots, the flowers, and the leaves, and peppermint. Um, these all work on the nervous system in different ways to help boost focus. They also help boost dopamine levels in many people. They don't all work the same on, di on the different people, so you kind of have to try which one works best for you. Um, also, as a woman, especially, hormonal nor normalizing herbs can really help because that um, uh, many times, as you've seen from there, our hormonal changes due to our cycles really can fuck up our ADHD. So taking these is a good idea. The two most common ones that work the best is Agnes Castus which is also called chaste tree. Um, and this comes in a berry form, usually is what we use. So it would be the chaste tree berry. And wild yam. Wild yam you can take as an infusion, which is like a tea. Or you can also use as a cream and rub it on twice a day. Other things that we can do is exercise, dancing, time outside in the sun, and the best one, sex. <laughs> that sounds crazy, I know, but it they all boost your dopamine levels and keep that focus um, up there. So, brain hyperactivity. What is this? Um, many girls and women are misdiagnosed or go undiagnosed for ADHD because it still has the stigma that it is mainly a boy disease and disorder that comes with lots of hyperactivity and running all over the place. And girls and women tend to have more of hyperactivity of the brain. What does that mean? That means we have rumination. We go over and over scenarios in our head. We replay them with different endings. How could we have done that? How could we have done that? Why did I say that? Why in the world would I do that? And so our brains just never really seem to shut off. So hyperactivity of the mind as well, which means your mind is always on and it is running laps. Um, it keeps restful sleep from happening and it can be exhausting mentally and physically because you're not getting enough sleep. Your brain is constantly running and when it does finally calm down some, you are just exhausted completely. So what can we do to help brain hyperactivity? We can journal. This helps with a lot of um, symptoms of that. Any repetitive thoughts you have that just keep going over and over and you can't get out, sometimes it helps to write those thoughts down. Um, keep a pen and a small notebook next to your bed. So if you're trying to fall asleep, you can write down whatever thought is running through your head um, and get that out of the way. Sometimes that helps. It doesn't help for everybody. So you got to find what works for you. Sometimes talking gets it out as well, just being able to talk to somebody about what's going on in your head. So some way to get it out of your head and so you can stop your brain from focusing on it. Um, focus on something else outside of your mind. Go hyper-focus on a passion. Anything. Set a timer so you're not there like all night staying up and having the opposite problem. Now you're still tired. But do hyper-focus on something else. Try getting out of your head for a little bit if possible. Um, we can help change our way of thinking by repeating mantras, especially I know many women that I have talked to with ADHD, myself included, we get stuck in these negative loop cycles in our head about, oh, I said that and I shouldn't have, I'm a bad person, or I am a bad friend because I didn't catch up with my friend, I didn't call them, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. And it can be very, we're very, very hard on ourselves sometimes. So 
change your thinking. When you feel those negative thoughts coming and they are just staying, repeat yourself to yourself whatever your mantra is. I put a couple on here. I am an amazing person. I am a good friend. Repeat to yourself what you know is the truth and try to stop your brain from cycling negatively on those thoughts about you. Um, herbs that we can use to help calm our minds down and keep the hyperactivity to a minimum are hops. Yes, the same ones that we use to make beer. Um, Hawthorne, German chamomile, and lemon balm. These are all herbs that work on the nervous system in different ways. Again, similar to the other herbs that we mentioned earlier. Hawthorne is typically known as being a cardiac herb, so it doesn't work on the nervous system. It works on the blood vessels instead, but it opens up the blood vessels and helps get more blood flow to the brain, which can definitely help with focus and calming, actually. So just a word of caution, some of these herbs can be very sedating to some individuals. So if you haven't taken them before, make sure you take them in the evening the first couple of times to ensure you're not going to fall asleep while you're like in the middle of driving to work. That can be very dangerous for you and everyone around you. So just make sure you take those, you know, at night to begin with and see how they affect you. Um, you would again take most of these as an infusion and we'll go over at the end how to make an infusion and what that entails. So sleep, beautiful sleep, <laughs> ADHD is unfortunately comorbid with disordered sleeping. This is a theory that it's because ADHD has a different circadian rhythm than those without ADHD. So instead of our bodies telling us around like 10 p.m. that, hey, it's time to go to bed like everybody else's bodies do who are neurotypical, our bodies around 2 a.m. decide that's when it's time to go to sleep. So our circadian rhythms tend to be off a little bit and we usually tend to uh, do really well sleeping from like 2 a.m. to like 10 a.m. instead of the 10 a.m. to like 7 a.m. So our bodies are a little bit different um, in that way as well. Secondary to time blindness, even our internal clocks are blind <laughs> to time. They don't know when to tell us to go to sleep. They are confused just as much as we are, unfortunately. So how can we help this? One hour prior to bedtime, you can take two to three milligrams of melatonin. You can set an alarm to remind you to take it. I have mine set at 8 p.m. every night, so when it goes off, I remember to take my meds and my herbs and everything else I need to take before bedtime to help me sleep. Also, one hour or two prior to bedtime, you can make an infusion of herbs that are known to help induce sleep and keep one asleep once they finally drift off, which these include hops, wild oats, valerian, and skullcap. And I put the Latin binomials next to them because some of these have multiple forms and these are the ones that you want to use, are the ones listed on here. Other things that we can do to help ADHD holistically is we can start taking probiotics daily. Serotonin and dopamine are produced in the intestines, so a healthy gut equals a healthy mind. Keeping your gut healthy helps keep those producing as they are supposed to. You can take turmeric, you can add it to your food, you can add it to your herbal infusions, you can take it in capsule form as curcumin. One word of caution with that is that if you already have um, iron, Issues like anemia, iron deficiency anemia, to not take too much of that as it can actually inhibit the absorption of iron. So you want to just be cautious on that, but it can definitely help increase um, focus and sleep and boost your immune system and calm a lot of the symptoms that we have down. Uh, magnesium glyconate. ADHD individuals have lower levels of magnesium. This leads to restless sleep, restless legs, and constipation. Um, magnesium glyconate is the more bioavailable form of magnesium, so you don't have the issue of taking it and then having the runs and having the opposite problem of constipation. Um, so you do absorb more of it and you use more of it and it doesn't have anything to waste, which is what causes the runs on the other one. So magnesium glyconate, you can take that two times a day and uh, for women up to four times a day when your cycle is going can also really help. Um, and exercise, 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 which I know is a dirty word with ADHD, but it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to go to the gym. You can just walk outside in the sun. You can do anything that is fun for you. I personally enjoy hiking, so we go hiking a lot. 
Um, like I was saying at the beginning, it's finally sunny outside and it's nice. So sometimes just laying out in the sun or taking a brief little walk in it is amazing and really does help your focus and your ADHD symptoms. So how in the world do you take these herbs? The best way is via an infusion or what is also called a water extraction. This means you boil your water, you pour it over the herbs, you let them steep for a certain amount of time, then you strain and you drink. So the dosing, if you are taking dried herbs, you wanna take one to two teaspoons of these herbs to eight ounces of water, which is 240 milliliters for those of you not in the US, and you wanna take those three times a day. Usually at meal times, with the exception of the herbs that you're taking for sleep, you wanna take those once a day at bedtime. So I'm sure you're pretty much thinking three times a day. I cannot remember that. I have ADHD. I obviously have a hard time remembering things. Ooh, this is crazy. And I get that. I do. I don't always take mine three times a day. Sometimes I make it two. Sometimes I make it one. Um, the best thing to do is to do your best. And that is all you can do. So my one tip for that, though, is if you're making an infusion three separate times a day, sometimes can be too much. It's overwhelming. You have to be at work and you can't be sitting there steeping tea then you can make in the mornings or the night before an entire day's worth at once and put it in a container and take it with you. You can drink it cold. You don't have to drink infusions hot. There is you know, no special thing that they're gonna work better if you take it warm, if you take it cold. And as always, if you are on any prescription medications, please consult myself or another medical professional before taking some of these herbs as some of them do interact with medications and I don't want anything bad to happen to you. So please, please, please reach out to somebody before starting these if you haven't tried them in the past or you maybe recently started something new from um, your doctor. So um, just a quick little blurb about my services. I do offer, offer consultations. These are wellness consultations that um, involve a detailed uh consultation where we go through a detailed health history. We go through um, what your current issues are that are bothering you the most and what you really want to get fixed. And we do a personalized treatment plan from that where I then formulate and mix up and blend and whatever else needs to be done, a personalized uh, blend of herbs for you. And I send that to you and you start taking them. We give it 30 days. We reevaluate with a follow up appointment in 30 days how you're doing, and we tweak things as necessary. And we do this until we have it exactly what blend is best for you and it's working well for you. And then we come up with a plan on how long we will take these. I teach you how to make them and use them yourself. And eventually, we will no longer be in super close contact with each other, but we will, I will be available for, you know, help and kind of get you to be able to feel comfortable doing this on your own. Um, of course, you can always buy the blends from me still. That doesn't change. Um, but you wouldn't need to be following up every 30 days and things like that. You would hopefully feel more comfortable um, being on your own eventually, and we would work together to get you there. Um, so herbs do work great for ADHD. As I said, I take them myself. Many of my kids take them. Some are on regular meds. Some are on herbs. Um, it's a combination for some, so it does work really well. However, herbs do work best when they are personalized for your symptoms, your health history, and any contraindications that you may have. Um, I recently spoke with someone who said that they felt like trying herbs and supplements was like throwing a bunch of stuff at a wall and whatever stuck was what, you know, you hopefully used and it, it worked for you. And that can very much feel like that when you are doing this on your own, that you're taking a whole bunch of stuff and throwing it on a wall and hoping something sticks that makes you feel better. Um, the benefit of coming to see um, a herbalist like myself is that I don't need to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall. I discuss things with you, we see, and I know all the herbs that would be good for you just after the consultation and which ones would work better. When we try to do it on our own sometimes, what we find is that you're taking these herbs that you've, you've read are good, and unfortunately, they work against each other. So you're taking two herbs that are canceling each other out, and you're not noticing the benefit. So if you try some of these on your own, and you're not noticing any improvement, or you feel like things are getting worse, um, then's the time to consult somebody. 
Um, I would love it if that would be me. My email is at the bottom here. Um, there's also uh, in the group that we're in, in, in my group, you can find my website <gasps> or you can find my Facebook page or Instagram page as well and contact me through any of those for um, signing up for a consultation. So as I mentioned, if you were watching this live, there is a link in the comments that you can sign up to receive a free 45 minute consult. That's normally a $75 consult, so 100% free. Anybody who signs up after the first five will get a discount of $55. This consult includes a 45 minute in-depth discussion, an intake form with your detailed health history that we go over together and discuss everything, and a personalized treatment plan, as well as one personalized herbal blend. Any, um, Refills after that first month will be um, at the normal retail price. So that is what you can sign up for today via that link, and I would love to talk with y'all more. In conclusion, ADHD does come with many unique challenges, but it has many strengths as well. Combination of herbs, supplements, diet, and lifestyle changes can make these strengths shine, keep your pesky symptoms at bay, and allow you to live your life to the fullest. I hope you all learned a lot today. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I would love to be able to answer anything that maybe I didn't touch on that you have a question about or anything else that maybe has popped up while we've been talking today. Um, and below is, like I said, my email and my Facebook and the Inst Instagram page so you can find me there and contact me if you would like. And that is everything I have today. <laughs> on all of this. I hope you all learned a lot. I don't see any questions coming through, so I'm going to uh, assume nobody has any, and that is fine. I will be running these seminars um, on a kind of regular schedule. Um, haven't determined what that regular schedule will be. It might be once a month, it might be once every other month. Um, I'm gonna figure that out and get back to you guys on that, but it was lovely talking to y'all today and doing this webinar. And I hope to hear from you soon um, and maybe get together and do a consultation and get you feeling back to your old self and take control of your health. Bye.